Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us for today's Facebook Live chat discussion on domestic violence, an observation of National Crime Victims' Rights Week. My name is Courtney Cochran, and I am a social worker in the Criminal Division's Victim Services Unit of the Delaware Department of Justice, and I will be the moderator for today's chat. Throughout this week, the Delaware Department of Justice will be providing resources and tips to victims of crime. In today's chat, we will discuss what is domestic violence, how the Delaware Department of Justice helps victims, and where victims may go for help. If you have any questions during the chat, please submit those in the comments below and we'll be sure to answer them. Remember, if you are a victim of domestic violence, please know that you are not alone and help is available. Call the National Domestic Violence Hotline at 1-800-799-SAFE. Let's get started. Today we have two panelists. Jen Cutney Soper, a victim and witness social worker in the Domestic Violence Unit at the Delaware Department of Justice, and Jenna Malecki, Deputy Attorney General and Head of the Domestic Violence Unit at the Delaware Department of Justice. The first question is, what is domestic violence? So domestic violence is a um, pattern of power and control. It can involve um, physical abuse, sexual abuse, emotional and psychological abuse, as well as financial abuse. The most recognized form of domestic violence uh, is intimate partner violence. So violence that occurs between uh, two people who are married or two people who are dating or had dated, um, but also included in the definition are um, familial violence. So parents to children, uh, grandchildren to grandparents, um, siblings to each other, that kind of thing. What and are the signs of domestic violence? So um, the, the biggest thing with domestic violence is that it happens behind closed doors. It's very rare that you're going to witness domestic violence being perpetrated against another person. Um, and people who tend to commit acts of domestic violence will often manipulate the situation to either make themselves look like a victim or make it look as though they are not the kind of person who could ever do that kind of thing. Um, if you notice that your friend or your child or your coworker has to um, ask permission to do everyday things, ask permission to access finances, uh, that kind of thing. Those tend to be indicators that domestic violence may be occurring in the home. We also find in, in what we see within our office um, and the victims that we speak to uh, who have experienced domestic violence themselves, it typically doesn't start um, all at once. And sometimes the things that you can see uh, are those things that happen early on in the relationship, like Jen mentioned, um, control of, of finances, um, somebody who needs to ask permission to go out, somebody who uh, you are out with and is receiving uh, frequent calls from their partner. Um, things like that are sort of those uh, early signs of, of someone um, who may become a perpetrator of domestic violence. And as Jen mentioned as well, uh, it's a lot more about power and control um, than only physical violence. So, so looking for signs of, of people who um, are beginning to withdraw, who are beginning to isolate um, is sometimes earlier, uh, is seen earlier in the relationship than not. How do you work to help victims of domestic violence in your role at the Delaware Department of Justice? So our um, purpose uh, and our job is to um, prosecute perpetrators of domestic violence. Um, in doing that, uh, what we do is we take all cases um, where there are arrests uh, and we take those cases through the criminal system and that is to say the court system. Um, resolutions of criminal cases can vary in their outcomes, um, but one of our primary functions at the Department of Justice, in addition to prosecuting offenders, uh, is navigating victims and witnesses through the criminal justice system. Um, it is a hard system. It is a system where 
um, victims do not always feel like they are heard. Uh, and one of our um, primary functions and one of the most important things we do in prosecuting these cases is making sure that um, the people who are uh, asked to testify and whose lives have been affected by these um, perpetrators are, are heard, are understanding of what the process is, um, and are aware of what resources are available to them. Um, so while uh, our main function is to um, hold people responsible and accountable um, and get offenders treatment um, and, you know, in, in certain cases, uh, punish them effectively for what they've done, uh, what we really seek to do is make sure that um, victims are heard. Uh, at the Department of Justice, we have social workers um, who work in all three counties. Uh, our main purpose is to uh, help during this prosecution phase of a uh, criminal case. It is in, it's a lot of explaining. Uh, I, I refer to it as as explaining legal to English um, because sometimes the legal language is hard to understand, but also, explaining what the process is, both at the misdemeanor level as well as the felony level. Um, we will talk with victims on the phone, ask what they hope to see happen with cases, um, explain their rights in the process, being present for court events, as well as court accompaniments when um, a case is prosecuted. We will sit in the courtroom during a trial um, and be able to offer support to victims and witnesses, uh, both during testimony and after. A main part of my job, honestly, is helping people access services to keep them safe. Domestic violence hotlines, PFA processes, which is a protection from abuse order, um, and hopefully connecting them with services if they need to move or install um, additional security at home or that kind of thing. And as Jen, um, has talked about uh, in terms of the resources that are available to victims of domestic violence, um, we are one place uh, to allow um, and enable access to those resources, resources to make sure that victims know uh, where to go. Um, just to give a better idea of how prevalent um, domestic violence is generally and even in, in what does not come specifically to us in our office, um, in, in 2020, um, there were over 22,000 domestic violence inc incidents. Um, and of those, only about half were determined to be criminal. Um, it was approximately 6,000 arrests. So there are a number of um, incidents that are classified as domestic violence that never even come through uh, the Delaware Department of Justice. Um, and that's something that's important because when we talk about these resources that we're able to guide um, you know, victims of domestic violence to, um, these are not limited to people that have come through our office. These are not limited to victims of criminal cases. These are resources that are available um, to anybody who is experiencing domestic violence. Um, and in terms of uh, individuals who do have contact with the police, um, law enforcement is also able to provide those resources even where a criminal charge is not filed. Um, so we are a point of contact certainly for anyone who would like a case to come through our office um, and we can provide some of those resources as can law enforcement, but it is not limited to victims of criminal cases. There are fantastic resources available both at the, uh, what we call the systems level. So police prosecution and post-conviction corrections um, but also nonprofit agencies. Many of the police departments here in Delaware have police-based victim services. And for some of our smaller municipalities, those services are provided by the Delaware State Police. Um, everyone is a trauma-informed uh, advocate for victims, can walk victims through a process of reporting a crime to the police, as well as connecting with services if the incidents don't rise to the level of a crime, but are still instances of, of abuse and power and control. Who should victims report domestic violence abuses to? Domestic violence can be reported a number of ways. 
Um, of course, oftentimes you will hear Jenna and I say, call the police. Um, but we do recognize that sometimes the police may not be the first point of intervention. Um, the domestic violence hotlines in all three counties are available 24 seven. There are Spanish speaking advocates available in all of the counties. Um, that is a, a point of contact, particularly for people who are trying to access shelter and, and safe housing services quickly. Um, a victim can also file for what's called a protection from abuse order if they choose to go through a civil court process. The um, domestic violence advocacy program is also run in all three counties. They help people file for protection from abuse orders in intimate partner violence situations um, and assist them with the understanding the petition, filing the petition, as well as having advocates available the day of hearings to walk them through that process. Um, the Delaware Volunteer Legal Services is available. They assist with things such as civil filings for custody of children, visitation, child support, um, that kind of thing. They tend, they are available in Newcastle County and community legal aid is available in Kent and Sussex for the same, for the same matters. There are all ways of reporting domestic violence. Um, if you are hoping to have criminal charges filed, the first step is calling the police. That's correct. A, a number of those resources, and I would say really all of them, while there's a lot of communication between the agencies that um, assist victims of domestic violence in the state of Delaware, um, there's a lot of confidentiality uh, in reporting them to those various agencies. Um, so calling, for instance, the domestic violence hotline is not going to trigger a report to the police or to the Delaware Department of Justice. Um, filing for a protection from abuse order is not going to have an officer come out and look at those allegations for criminal charges. Um, so in terms of what to do to report um, a criminal complaint, the answer is call the police. Um, that is the way that those files would be, uh, the case would be looked at, the files, the charges would be filed if that's the appropriate thing. And then they would come into our office for um, evaluation and resolution on, on the criminal charges alone. Uh, but as Jen said, that is not the only way um, that you can request help. That is not the only resource that exists in Delaware. Um, and if you're not ready to take that step, there are resources available that would not have the police involved uh, at that stage. What would you like to tell those who may be victims of domestic violence? My first statement is that you're not in this by yourself. Um, oftentimes abusers will completely isolate the people that they are abusing from their support systems, be it uh, families of origin, birth families, um, to friends, and uh, coworkers, that kind of thing. Um, and you can feel very much on your own and like you're the only person going through it. And you're not. There are hundreds of people every day who unfortunately have to deal with the same situation. And I think that is the most important thing to lead with that um, victims of domestic violence are not on their own. Um, we have advocates available. We, there is a lot of help available in Delaware. Um, as part of the Delaware Victims Rights Task Force, there's a website, www.delawarevictimservices.org, and it is full of resources available for victims of crime. And, and if you need help, we are here. Um, victims have the right to be heard and victims have the right to be um, seen and everyone working in this process feels very strongly about that. Um, I think that we see a lot of um, different, you know, types of crime in our office um, and I don't think a lot of people understand uh, how many crimes are perpetrated by people um, offenders that are known to the victim. Um, domestic violence, however, the, 
the offender is always known to the victim. Um, and that comes with uh, a lot of complications and a lot of um, difficult situations that a victim is put in, in even taking those initial steps um, to report and taking initial steps to seek help. Um, and we see that, um, we hear that, uh, and we recognize that. And uh, I would say to all the victims of domestic violence who are unsure of what their next step is, um, take a step and, and get somebody uh, to help you, whether that be through the criminal process or whether that be through a hotline. Um, you know, we, we care a lot uh, about all of you. We care a lot about the work that we do. Um, and there are a lot of people in the state of Delaware um, who have dedicated their lives to trying to make sure that every victim um, is heard and helped. And, and that is our goal uh, at the Department of Justice. I will say briefly that um, a lot of times the advice that people will get is you should leave. And I want people to know that our help is available whether or not you choose to leave. Uh, victims and survivors of domestic violence are the best person to know their safety at any given time. And we as advocates are available to assist with safety planning and executing safety plans that are guided and centered around the individual victim's needs. There is no cookie cutter model for how a person leaves a domestic violence situation or resolves a domestic violence situation without leaving. Um, and so we, we try very hard and to work with victims as an individual and under, try to understand and try to work within the safety plan that works best for that person. And as Jen said, uh, you know, no cookie cutter, I think, really extends uh, across the board. Um, there is, there's no behavior that we expect of somebody who has been victimized. Um, there is no way a victim is supposed to look or supposed to act or supposed to talk. And um, any, you know, anyone who needs help who is worried about being um, judged unfairly based on their history or anything else, um, please do not let that stop you from, from coming forward. Um, you know, the people that are here to help you um, understand much more than you know uh, about, about everything in terms of domestic violence, about, um, you know, the trauma involved and reactions based on trauma. Uh, and so all of that um, should not be something that, that somebody holds against themselves uh, or something that prevents them from coming forward if they need help. Looks like we have a question from the audience. For folks with disabilities, what is the percentage rate of victims with disabilities and offenders with disabilities? That's a great question. Um, I don't know that we have hard and fast numbers for um, percentage rates of victims or offenders with disabilities, um, mostly because disabilities can be visible and they can be invisible. Um, I can say that with regards to working with victims of, of domestic violence who have disabilities, the Department of Justice is willing to get the assistance that we need to work with that person, be it um, an ASL interpreter, making sure that a person who may have a service animal is able to um, bring, that, bring that service animal into the courthouse. Um, you know, sometimes taking a break during trial prep, um, just to give the person time to catch up, we will move at their pace and uh, we are happy to um, make the accommodations that are needed for that person uh, as, they're, as they're present in this process. I also don't know the statistics um, offhand um, I know that in my own experience, I have had both victims uh, and offenders with disabilities, um, as Jen said, um, some that are apparent and some that you, know, you don't know immediately. Um, it is our job to make sure that everybody um, who has something to say in this system is heard in this system. Um, and so we would certainly make sure that we accommodate uh, any needs that anybody has in, uh, in a criminal case. 
Do you guys have any closing thoughts that you want to let victims of domestic violence know? I think I would say um, in terms of a, a criminal case and the life of a criminal case, um, all of that is, is what it is our job to explain. Um, all of that is what we do day in and day out. Um, and so I, I think when, um, you know, when it gets into court and when it gets into um, even the Department of Justice on, on the criminal side, a lot of victims feel very overwhelmed um, because they feel like they have to do something. Um, and I just wanna tell everybody that that, that is our job. Um, our job is to prosecute a criminal case. Our job is to make sure um, that a victim is uh, guided towards resources um, that they need, whether that be on, on the actual criminal case, whether that be in custody, in divorce, in visitation, um, protection from abuse. And so um, if, if the fear is ever going through this process, I would like victims to know um, that that is not something that they would need to worry about. Um, if you feel something needs to be reported, if you feel um, that you are unsafe, please reach out to someone, whether that be criminal or otherwise, um, because your safety is, is really, really important to us. Um, I, I want to kind of reiterate what Jenna already mentioned, that uh, it is ultimately up to a prosecutor. Um, and a lot of times I work with people who say, I don't want to be the one who does X. I don't want to be the one who puts him in jail. I don't want to be the one who sends her to rehab. Uh, I don't want to be the one who, you know, has forces this particular charge on their record. Um, that is not, that, that is, that's on us. <laughs> we will take ownership of that. Uh, your, your job as a victim and survivor is to do what is best for you. And if, they, if you have children, what is best for your children? Um, it's our job to worry about the legal system. Uh, that being said, we, we do take what is told to us from victims and what they believe is the best course of action into consideration, into great consideration. And I can, I'm not gonna speak on behalf of our prosecutors, but Jenna knows me well enough at this point that I can say confidently that they take that into account uh, as one of the more important parts of trying to figure out where we go and what the best solution is on any individual case. Um, lack, of, lack of criminal case does not you know, stop me from being a resource to people if they need it from our other social workers, not just in Newcastle County where I am, but Kent and Sussex where Courtney is to offer resources and assistance. Um, we are here and there are so many other people who are here as well. And I, I also would like to say in terms of what we do internally, um, you know, Jen mentioned the prosecutors and it ultimately being our decision on what to do in any case. Um, our prosecutors receive a great deal of training um, they have all been through courses through the Domestic Violence Coordinating Council, um, you know, other groups. And so when I say that, um, you know, that it's something that many of the advocates and all of the advocates really in domestic violence are aware of, um, I'm, I'm speaking of the prosecutors as well. Um, we have tried very, very hard to make sure um, that when a case comes through, uh, you know, the criminal process yeah. in domestic violence, that it is something that um, our prosecutors understand, um, not just the charge on a piece of paper, but, but all of it, the dynamics of domestic violence um, and the things that you know, a victim may not be able to articulate uh, right away, um, but certainly are, they're all on our purview and all something that um, we try to take into account on how to resolve any given case. Um, and not every resolution is a jail sentence. Um, not every resolution is, you know, just treatment. It, it, every case is different. Um, every individual is different. And so um, when I said early, and I've probably said it a, a few times, um, our job is really to, to give victims a voice in the criminal process. Um, and that is our main goal and, and something we try to do in every case. 
Thank you. It looks like there are no other questions at this time, but if at a later point, those who are watching a replay of the chat have a question, please submit them below and we will get back to you. Well, that concludes today's discussion on domestic violence abuses. I'd like to thank our panelists for taking time out of their day to provide resources and information to those who watched. Please remember that as part of National Crime Victims Rights Week, the Attorney General's Facebook page will be raising awareness of various crimes while providing tips and resources. Please tune in tomorrow at 12 p.m. for a Facebook Live chat discussion on the Delaware Department of Justice's Victim Witness Assistance Program. Thank you for tuning in and please stay safe and healthy.